Yes, there's an actual tool in Photoshop that allows us to erase the background. No, we are not talking about any selections or masks. You'll be blown away to see how powerful, customizable, advanced, and easy to use this tool can be. Sometimes it's so accurate, it's just amazing. But why don't we use it? Why don't we talk about it so much? There is one major drawback this tool actually has. And today, we're gonna see whether we can solve that drawback and make this tool one of the best tools to remove backgrounds in Photoshop. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download any of the photos shown in the tutorial, check the links in the description. So first of all, where is the tool actually? Have a look right here, but this is the eraser, right? So if you click and hold, have a look at the tools under the group. The second one is the one that we are looking for. It literally says the background eraser tool, select that. And then make a copy of the background layer just for backup. Press Ctrl or Command J. Now let's go ahead and create a solid color adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color. And we're gonna choose a color like black and then hit OK. Now bring down the solid color adjustment layer under layer one. Why? Because in layer one, we're gonna erase the background. So let's go ahead and select layer one. And right now there is some settings set up. We're gonna talk about settings later. We'll learn all about that. But I just wanted to show you how this tool actually works. So simply just start from the background. Let's make the brush a little smaller, softer and start painting and see how easily the background is being removed. Why are we seeing black? Because in the background, we have black just below layer one. And we are erasing the background in layer one. Simply just paint and you're good to go. Have a look, so complex here and we are easily removing it. So how does it actually work? You tell Photoshop what color the background is, you paint on the background, Photoshop analyzes what the background is, removes it. Now. There's one major drawback this tool has. We just did it, we just demonstrated it. Pause it, think about it for a moment. What is the one major drawback? Have a look at it closely. If we remove the background, then for example, I want something back over here. What if I accidentally painted right in here? What if I want this area back? There is no masks. If you were doing select and mask or doing any other method involving masks, you could have just painted white in that area and got that area back. That is the biggest drawback of this tool, that it works destructively. We cannot work non-destructively with this. Or what if we can? Hold that thought for a moment. We'll talk about how to make this tool non-destructive later. But right now, let's learn about all these settings at the top. So the first one, first three right here, takes care of the sampling. How are we sampling the colors? Okay. So the first one right here is continuous sampling, this one. So wherever you paint, it continuously samples from the area under the crosshair. Have a look at it. So if I paint right here, it will continue to sample from the middle of the brush. See the crosshair in the middle, right? You just paint and it continuously samples. Now the drawback is, what if you put it over the hair. It also samples the hair and erases it. It is good when you have hard edges and the background color is constantly changing, all right? Otherwise, it's useless. The second one right here, let's go back, is one-time sampling. It samples just once. What does that mean? If you click on that and then you start the sample from here, it takes a sample from area under the crosshair, but it just doesn't continuously sample. So if I start painting from here, it samples the green color beneath the crosshair and then just keeps it as long as I hold down the brush, as long as I don't release the brush. So if I keep on painting, and even if I get inside this, it just won't remove it because it has sampled that color already. However, if you lift the brush and if you put it right there, it's gonna erase that area. Are you understanding how this is working? It samples the first time. So if I start painting from here, it samples the green color. And even if I try to get in, it just won't paint over there. Have a look at this interesting thing. Her eyes are green, right? So if I start painting from here, it didn't remove anything, but have a look. It removed the eye area because that area was green. So it samples just once. Now the third one is background sampling, have a look at it. Sampling, background swatch. So whatever color is in the background swatch, that color will be erased, but that's not very useful. The first two are the ones that we're gonna use all the time. Mostly, the second one is my favorite. Now let's talk about limits. Have a look, it's right up there. So what is limits? The limit settings allow you to limit from where you can paint as the name suggests. And to understand the concept, I have a couple examples for you. Keep in mind, 
concepts are the most important thing in Photoshop. Have a look at this example. For example, we want to remove the yellow and keep the red. Right now, the limits is set to discontiguous. Have a look at what it does. If I make the brush big enough and start painting right here, it removes the yellow even inside the bars, right? Let's paint right here. It removes the yellow even inside the red bars, okay? Now, let's go back. If I change this to contiguous and then start painting, it just doesn't go inside the bar. So in this case, when it's set to contiguous, it will only remove the pixels which are physically attached to the color that you are removing. Make sense? So if I'm removing this color, all the yellow pixels that were physically attached to it will be removed. However, have a look inside the bars. These are not physically attached to the yellow pixels outside the red bar. And that's why they were not removed. Similarly, if I make the brush a little smaller and paint inside right here, see, it's still not touching the other yellows. So that's what contiguous is. Now the next one is find edges. It's similar to contiguous, but it allows Photoshop to find where the edges are. It detects for the edges and it's kind of more accurate, keeps the edges a little sharp, but it's just like contiguous. Even if I paint right here, it's just like this. So the main difference you have to keep in mind is between contiguous and discontiguous, all right? Now let's talk about tolerance. Think about tolerance as how many colors you can tolerate. Doesn't make sense? Let's head over to example number three and to better understand tolerance, we will use the magic wand too. And this is a simple gradient from green to yellow. Right now, the tolerance is 50, right? So if I click right here, a range of color is selected, right? Let's press control or command D. If I set the tolerance to zero, and then when I click here, only that shade of green, only the exact same shade of green is selected. Press Ctrl or Command D. If I click here, the same thing happens. Only that exact shade of yellow is selected. Press Ctrl or Command D. Now if I increase the tolerance to say 20%, if I click here, the range has been increased, which means we are including more colors into the selection. Press Ctrl or Command D. If I set the tolerance to 100, click, an even larger section is selected. The more we increase the tolerance, the more the colors will be affected. In any way, whether we are erasing stuff, whether we are selecting stuff, so tolerance is just the range of colors that we are including around the color that we just clicked on or sampled, okay? So if I increase the tolerance to say 255, and click, everything is selected. All right, I think it makes sense now. Now, if you return to our image, select the background eraser tool, set the limits to discontiguous. Why? Because we are painting around the hair and we wanna remove the background from between the hairs. We don't wanna limit it. It's not a hard edge, right? So we'll set discontiguous right here and the tolerance right now is 50. So it's painting all right, removing the background, it's pretty cool. What if we decrease the tolerance to say 5%? it will only paint the exact same colors and it will not take into consideration any color nearby. So let's go ahead and increase the tolerance to 20. 20 is pretty good, but it's still leaving out some colors. So that's why we chose 50. Now it's also important that you don't choose too high. So if you choose, let's say 100, it will also take in into consideration the color of the hair as well. So if I just paint with 100 right here, it also starts erasing the hair a little bit. If you, the 100 I guess is the maximum right there. So don't choose 100. See, it's also erasing the hair. We don't want that to happen. A general rule here is to select the lowest tolerance possible. The lowest tolerance that will remove the background. That's why we start with, let's say two, three, four, five. Five didn't work, so we will try nine and then we'll start painting. It just doesn't work. Maybe let's increase it, increase it to 30. 30 works pretty fine. It works pretty good, but it still leaves out some colors. Then we will try 39, 40, 
40 is pretty great. So we can have different tolerances for different areas. Just keep in mind that when you start from a lower number and then when you reach a point where the tolerance just works for the image, stop right there. Don't go beyond that because in that case, you might remove things that you didn't want to, all right? Now using all these techniques that we learned, we will remove the background of the subject and then we will learn how to make it non-destructive. So let's go ahead and start right from scratch. I'm gonna select that layer and press the delete key to delete it. And then we're gonna make a copy of the background layer, press Control or Command J, and then place it above the solid color adjustment layer. Now let's do it right from the beginning. We're gonna select discontiguous for the hair. And then 40% is fine, let's see how that works. And if it doesn't work, then we increase, right? Just simply start and paint here. It's leaving out some areas as I can see. So I'm gonna go with 50. 50 was great for this image. Now for your image, it might be different. Just around the edges. It's working pretty great. So sometimes it might fry up the edges. In that case, you might wanna decrease the tolerance. So I'm gonna go 45-ish. Just a basic one will do. Maybe if you wanna increase it now, let's go 55. If it's too much, let's go 40-ish right here. This is okay. All right. That was bad, let's go back. Okay, we have done the hair, but for the body, since this has a hard edge and we don't want to get inside, we will select find edges or contiguous. Let's go ahead and select find edges. It just won't go inside. So Photoshop tries to find the edges. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Let's try increasing the tolerance to 70. And if it doesn't work, we will select contiguous. Since the background has a little texture, it's having a little difficulty. So we're going to select contiguous right here and change the tolerance to 50 back again. Yes, it works pretty good. From time to time, you might have to pick up the brush and then paint to be able to sample that color, right? So if we are continuing from here, it won't just paint right here. So we'll have to pick up and then again paint. This is good. This is easy. And I think we are pretty much done. We just had to do the edge. All right. Just paint over here, pretty nice. And let's do this area, this green area right there. Yes, pretty taken care of, looks okay. You just had to do the borders and it's fine. Let's do this area properly. Okay, now let's learn how to make it non-destructive. It's pretty simple, we just did it. So let's bring the background or let's make a copy of the background layer, one more copy, copy two, and let's bring it above the solid color adjustment layer, right? Then we will hold the control or command. Click on the thumbnail of the background copy or let's name it subject one. And this one was destructive. Let's name it subject one, destructive. I'm forgetting the spellings. Hold the control or command, click on the thumbnail. Now, you can delete it or you can keep it, doesn't really matter. Turn this off, I'm just gonna turn it off. Come back to this one and we're going to name it subject non-destructive. Just click on the mask button. Now you have the mask of the same thing. I can delete it. Subject one destructive. We don't need it. I don't know why I named one, but that's okay. Now you select the brush. Okay, next, let's make the brush a little smaller. Let's make it soft and flow and opacity at 100. Hold the alt or option. Click on the mask button and then you can paint out the extra areas with black. Make sure the foreground color is black. You can just press X to toggle between the foreground and the background. Let's go back and just paint in black in these areas and fill up the rest of the areas, just like so. Easy, very easy to do. Done, now for the critical areas, if you want to fine tune it, you can also choose the blend mode overlay and then decrease the flow to somewhere around 20 to 30%. So I'm gonna decrease it to 20%. That way it just won't paint on the white areas. Now, if I paint here, see how nicely it's working? Fine tuning the stuff. All right, let's do it on the other side. This is fine. Let's do it right here, right there. 
just a little bit is fine. Now, if you want to bring some things back which have been erased accidentally, you can do that as well. So you can choose overlay with the same overlay selected. You can change the foreground color to white. Press X to toggle between the foreground and the background. And now we can paint right here. Now, when you have white selected, it just won't paint on the black area. See, it just won't paint over there, right? So we can easily paint on the inside without being afraid. Let's do it over here. That is taken care of. Let's do it over here. You can increase the flow if you want to, but I'm pretty happy with this one. All right, I'm just roughly doing it for you. Let's work it out over here. Let's, all right, you're in good shape. Hold the Alt or Option, click on the mask button, and it's done. Wasn't that awesome? Now you have a mask, you can do whatever you want. If you think this is very fried up, you can make it smooth, you can blur it out, you can simply take the blur too. So right here, you'll find the blur tool and you can blur in the mask. Hold the Alt or Option, click on the mask button to show how it looks. You can simply blur it out, you can smooth it out, you can do whatever you want. You have a mask and you can modify it in every way possible. This is non-destructive, what more do you want? So that was pretty much all about the background eraser tool in Photoshop. It's a hidden gem if you use it properly. So is it better than select and mask? Does it mean that the quick selection tool is completely trash or select subject is totally useless? Not at all. Every technique, feature and tool has its own place. A lot of you guys ask in the comments and I absolutely appreciate it is that, hey, Unmesh, you just taught me this technique. Is this better than the previous one that you covered? Well, that's for you to decide, that's for your image to decide, and that's for your situation to decide. Just a quick little recap. First of all, we have the sampling types right here. This one is the continuous, this samples one, and this samples from the background swatch. We will mostly be using these two, but my favorite is the middle one. It samples the first time you paint. Okay, so first time you put down the brush, it samples then. Next, we have limits. We have contiguous, discontiguous, and find edges. Contiguous removes the colors which are only attached by pixel to the area that you're painting in. It won't go cross borders. The discontiguous will go cross borders and find edges, tries to find the edge and then remove it accordingly. Most of the times it just doesn't work but you have a flat background, it might. Now the tolerance is how many colors you can tolerate. It's the range of colors being affected. The higher the tolerance, the more the range. And that's pretty much it. And then you start painting and then you remove it. Now to make it non-destructive, you make one more copy of the original image, hold the control or command, click on the thumbnail of the subject where you just remove the background. Now you have the selection. Now select the new copy and click on the mask button. Now you have the mask of the same thing. So that's all for this video. Hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.